In this problem, we consider the Fitland gym and the usage patterns of male and female patrons as they divide up between the morning and the evening. So we were given a table of information, so a sample. So the number of female and male patrons using the gym both in the morning and in the evening. And the question is, is there any difference uh, or association between these variables? So in usage patterns between males and females, uh, morning versus evening. Okay, so there's a hypothesis test we can carry out related to the chi-square distribution. There's multiple steps. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the row and, uh, rather the column, and row totals for each of these entries. So we can do this by hand or we can use Excel. So I'll go ahead and pull that up and do that. So let's see, here's our data right here. And starting here, we can just use the sum formula in Excel. We just highlight the things we want to add together, close paren, and hit enter. So that's 200. And then if we grab the little square in the lower right hand corner and drag it to the right, it'll actually also do the sum for this column as well. And now for the rows, you can do the same kind of thing. Sum and now highlight the two rows we want, close paren like that. And then we can drag this down actually twice because the other thing we're going to need is the grand total. So a total of 391 uh, patrons were included among our data. Okay, so we've got the row totals and the column totals. So we can go ahead and write that information over here. You don't necessarily have to actually write this down since it would be included in Excel anyway. And it's probably recommended to go ahead and, and use Excel um, for your calculation purposes. All right, so the next step is to calculate the expected counts. So these are the counts that we would have if there was no association between these variables as, at all. So remember the formula for calculating the expected counts is we take, like if we want the expected count associated with women in the morning, we would take the uh, we take the column total 200 multiplied times the row total 150 and divide that product by 391. So your text has an explanation for why this is an appropriate thing to do so I won't go into that here. Uh, instead let's just go ahead and do the calculation but I'll actually go ahead and do these in Excel again. So we'll just go down right here say and for this cell I'm going to say equals and remember I want the uh, column total 200 times the row total, which is 150, and then divided by the grand total, 391. We'll just hit enter. So 76.73. So that's the expected count. And now we can just do the same thing for each of the four entries. So there's this entry here. Uh, we'll now move to the female's evening entry. So now we take this uh, column total, 191, times same row 150 divided by again the grand total 4 hit enter so now we have an expected count of 73.27 and two more times now for males uh, morning usage we take the column uh, including the 113 multiply times the row total for 113 and then divide by the grand total again then finally, last one, uh, men's use in the evening. So we take the uh, column, including the 128 here. So that total multiplied times the row total, 241, and then divided by, again, the grand total. So it's always row total times column total divided by grand total. So these give us our expected counts. Okay, so I'll just make a new table right over here and stick these in here. Okay, so 76.7. I'm just rounding to one decimal place for the purposes of writing this down. 23. Okay, so this is the information from Excel. So finally, the last, uh, well, not quite the last step, but the next thing we do is we take the difference between the observed count 
and the expected count, square it, and then divide by the expected count. And we do that for each of the four cells. Okay, so for instance, uh, one, the, uh, the cell that corresponds to females morning usage, we would have something like this. So 87 minus 76.7 squared and then divided by 76.7. Okay, and if you actually do the calculation, um, well, what do we get? Well, I don't know. Let's go ahead and figure it out. We'll use Excel for this one more time. We'll come back over here. So let's see here. We could put this, how about right here? Okay, equals. And so now we're going to have, I'm going to put a couple parentheses on here. And remember, we want the observed value minus the expected value. Close paren, and I want to square that. And then we divide that by the expected count. We hit enter. Okay, so we get 1.376. So I'll go and report that over here. Now we need to do that for all four cells. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull up Excel. And actually, we can, it's a little bit easier. Uh, we don't have to type it in each time in this case, because what we can do is just grab this, drag it over. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oops, let's see here. Eh. Do this one more time here. Sorry about that. Okay. Now what I meant to do is grab a little square in the lower corner there. There we go. And now what it does is this 144 uh, corresponds to 63 minus 73.27 all squared then divided by 73.27 so it does the corresponding calculation for this cell right here and now we can actually do the same kind of thing if we grab this and drag it down this 0.897 works for that cell and that cell together and then finally the 0.856 right here corresponds to this cell and this cell so min the morning Okay, so what we do next is, remember, we add all these things up. So let's see, I need a little more room. How about if I put it right here? So we're going to say equals sum sum, and now we highlight all four of these, like that. And then close parenthesis. No, this column is a little on the small side there. There we go. So we get 4.569. Uh, so that's the value of the test statistic. And then finally, the last step is to figure out, okay, what, um, what's the uh, p-value here? So we just use chi dist. We enter the, whoops, except, we have an equal sign in here. So we highlight the cell we want, and then the degrees of freedom is just one. It's two minus one times two minus one, so just one degree of freedom. And then hit enter and we get 0.033. So we wind up with a p-value that's fairly small, 0.033. Uh, I would say that's probably evidence that we actually do have some sort of relationship among these variables.